right, we are opening up this Holly Midmount Accessory Drive Kit. So this Holly Midmount Accessory Kit has all the accessories pulled in tighter than any other accessory drives. That's one of the reasons that I chose this. Uh, among many of the swap friendly features, the bracketless assembly that actually mounts all the accessories to the water pump directly. So that's one of the main things that I love about this setup is you're just gonna mount the water pump to the engine and then all the accessories are gonna mount to it. Um, super easy to install. I'm recording this video after I've already installed it and I give this thing two thumbs up and I would recommend this for any single person that's installing this on their LS motor. So some of the things you'll see here, it's got a bracketless accessory mounting, ultra easy assembly, uh, bottom outlet heater hose options. So you can run the heater hose out the side or out the bottom. It's got the LT1 style hairpin alternator, the LT1 style water pump, the AC compressor, the SD7 AC compressor. It's got the type two power steering pump, OE pulley ratios, it's available for the LS and the LT applications. It's got the billet tensioner cover, billet alternator, compressor pulley covers, and the dampener. So it's got everything that you're gonna need to install this front accessory drive. All right, let's get started on this thing. So you're gonna remove the original bolt first, then remove the damper pulley with a LS style puller and then apply some lubricant to the bore of the new damper hub and then also the hub side of the original bolt head. Using an installation tool like the ICT one that's linked in the description. Then after you get the pulley on there, install the original bolt to 240 foot-pounds of torque. That's gonna help seat the pulley onto the engine. And then we are going to remove that bolt install the new bolt to 59 foot-pounds of torque and then you're going to use a tool to turn it 125 degrees clockwise from the 59 foot so you'll see in the video uh, kind of the tool that i use here you can get one of these from amazon or your local parts store to turn it 125 degrees this takes a lot of torque so you're going to need something to hold your flywheel Kind of like the trick flow tool that they use to prevent the engine from turning after you get it turned 125 degrees then the installation process is complete on that bottom pulley the next step is prepping the water pump for installation we're going to install the gasket and the pulley on here whenever you get ready to install the gasket just use the guide pin to put it on there correctly then you're just going to put the pulley on there and then use the supplied hardware to install the pulley to the water pump one helpful tip, do not confuse the M6 20 long bolts in your instructions with the 18 bolts to use later. Also, whenever you get ready to torque down the pulley, it's 85 inches of pounds, not foot pounds of torque. So don't get that confused. I almost did that, which would have been a disaster. We're getting ready to install the water pump to the actual engine block. You do this with six bolts. They're all M8 bolts, but there is one bolt that's a little bit shorter than the other that's going to go close to where the alternator is. Grab your supplied gaskets. Go ahead and slide your bolts in to hold the gasket. That way, when you slide the water pump to the engine, you can kind of get them started by hand, as you see in the video. Once you get all those started by hand, then we're gonna go through and we're gonna tighten them up and then we're gonna torque the M8 bolts to 18 foot pounds of torque. You'll wanna torque these starting with the A bolt, which is the short bolt near the alternator. Start with that one and then go in a sequential pattern in the same order for both sides. Once you do that and you have them all bolted down to 18 foot pounds, you're good to go. We have installed the water pump. Next, we're going to install the thermostat and the heater hose connection. So make sure to align the thermostat clocking tab to the notch in the housing. There's a little bitty notch you'll see to align that correctly. Then we're going to torque the M6 button head bolts to 85 inch pounds of torque using a standard three millimeter hex tool. Do not use a ball hex tool on this and don't over tighten. You don't want to strip these out. After we get that installed, we're going to hook up some of the hose connections. And one really cool thing about this setup is you have a couple different ways that you can do this. You can put the connections out the side of the motor, kind of the 
silver part that you see in the middle of the screen and run the heater hoses to wherever you need them or you can plug those holes and run them out the bottom like I'm going to do. I'm going to run a loop in my heater hose right now. I'm not going to have a heater on this truck. I will have AC, but I will loop those through the bottom so it keeps it nice and tucked where you don't see it, but you can do it either way. It just depends on how you want to run your heater hoses. There's a specific way to install the hose barbs. Uh, there's a 5 8 and a 3 quarter. They're only going to fit in there one way, but go ahead and install those. You're going to want to use some kind of pipe dope or thread sealant or a thread locker like I like to use. Um, something that's going to help seal those connections whenever you're installing them. In the video you'll see I just hand tighten them because at this time I didn't have the connections and I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to run the heater hoses. I went back later and installed the thread locker. Holly also offers a swivel thermostat housing and also a swivel barb three quarter and five eighths. So you can pause the video now and get those part numbers off of the screen. That way, if you have a tight clearance and you're trying to clear the hoses and make it all look nice and neat, you can buy those parts and get exactly what you need. Now we're getting ready to install our alternator and it's pretty straightforward. You've got two bolts, one's a socket head, one's a button head. So pay attention to the right hardware that you need for this. We're just gonna put the alternator up to the engine. We're gonna slide our bolts in. Then you're just gonna torque them to 36 foot pounds of torque. And whenever you get ready to wire this up, just go back to your wiring diagram. This kit does come with a plug for your alternator, so you don't have to purchase that. It just plugs in and then wires in to your factory harness. Now we're gonna prep the power steering pump to install onto the engine. So we're gonna install the 6AN adapter assembly. We're going to use the ceiling crush washers on both sides. We're going to hand tighten it and then we're going to use the M820 flange head to connect it to the power steering pump. Then we're going to need a pulley installation tool to actually install the pulley onto the motor. As you see in my video, I actually installed the pulley after I installed the power steering pump onto the motor because I didn't have a pulley installer at the time but Zach came in clutch and installed that for me. You'll just need to rotate the power steering pump until you get a, about an eighth inch of gap between the reservoir and the alternator. The mounting holes are slotted to different reservoir options, so just rotate the pump assembly counterclockwise until you get it to the right position. Use your M830 flange head bolts, and then you're gonna tighten those to 18 foot-pounds of torque. It says in some applications, the supplied reservoir may interfere with the vehicle. In these cases, a remote reservoir can be utilized. It's Holly Power Steering Pump 198100 is best suited for those remote reservoirs. Um, always check the Holly website and make sure it's going to fit. We're going to install the AC compressor now. So go ahead and preload the M895 socket head bolt into the compressor and don't over tighten it at this time. It's gonna slide into the water pump slot. Then we're gonna install the second M895 socket head bolt into the top. And in the video, you can see I had to remove my tall valve covers in order to get to this bolt. So if you get to that point and you've already got your valve covers on there, you will have to remove those if they're the tall size. After assembly, torque those M8 bolts to 18 foot-pounds of torque. And here's where I was talking about Zach coming in clutch to mount that power steering pulley onto the power steering pump. So he got that taken care of and now it's time we can go ahead and put the belt tensioner on there and then run our belt. So the belt tensioner was really easy. It just went in there with an M870 button head bolt and a washer. Once I got that on there, I routed the belt and there's a guide to go by to mount the belt. Then you just use the belt tensioner to get them tight. And then that is it with the installation. A few little things that you have to do whenever you're done of you either have to plug the steam port on the back of the water pump, or you can actually run that to your steam port and then you will need to run your heater hoses and run your radiator hoses and all the connections like that. And of course your wiring. But besides that, very simple install. I think this video is less than 15 minutes to show you how to do everything. I got it all done in about three hours, I would say. 
So highly recommend this, looks really good. The price point is kind of expensive, it's about $2,500. But compared to a system that you would try to add an alternator, power steering pump, AC compressor, water pump, all those things, you might be able to get the bolt-ons cheaper, but it's not gonna look as good and it's not gonna be as compact as this setup.